You know, I actually didn't expect to record this video, but this was so abrupt. Um, essentially, Charlie Intel put up a tweet about a uh, Black Ops 4 scrapped campaign that Treyarch said that they never even made uh, or they never even started development on a campaign, but they actually did. We got a huge leak here on a Reddit post 16 hours ago at the time of recording this all about the Black Ops 4 campaign. Uh, we have a bunch of information on how it all would have went features in it, um, including a bunch of images of like of what it says to be early documentation powerpoints going step by step on each mission images of early builds of missions storyboards and all that stuff i obviously can't show that even though i have the link right here uh the link will be in the description if you want to go take a look at it yourself uh i'll leave a link to the reddit post uh which then leaves a link to all the different images and stuff um and it also talks i'll even have the old leaked black Ops 4 campaign footage um that he says um, it's not related to this mode, and that was an early prototype for the Specialist HQ um, that was created long after the original campaign's cancellation. There was this video that went around of the what, what was said to be the leak early like development of the campaign, even though it was just for Specialist HQ. But I wanted to go through it to see everything that was about the campaign. I haven't taken a look at any of this. I've looked at some of the images um, of the early documentation. Uh, which was very 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 cool to look at um i still need to go through and look at all of it but i mean like i said it's 400 plus images it's like it's a lot i don't know where he got this from but uh yeah we're gonna read through it and if you guys do enjoy today's video be sure to leave like subscribe and turn on notifications to be notified every time i put another video like this one and let's get right into this so we got disclaimer this is a long ass post and result of months of research and discussion with people who have inside knowledge of this mode i will have 30 ish minute video yeah he'll have a video uh, going on august 18th uh, about all the information I'm gonna beat you to it, but no, I'm just kidding. I'm not that guy, uh, but I, I'm definitely making a video on this. Okay, so most of the images presented are from early 2017 builds. So the environments, UI, et cetera, are all unfinished. There are very little material from the finished uh, December 2017 milestone build. Um, and then of course he talks about the campaign, like leaked footage, quote unquote. Um, then you got all this stuff. So the mode. Black Ops 4's original campaign was called Career. It was scoped to be a 2v2 race to the finished mode as covered by Jason. I, don't know how to say that last name with his 2019 article covering the developer abuse within Treyarch the mode was scrapped in early 2018 due to technical issues and overall gameplay loop being described as too repetitive on top of the title being set to release a month earlier for October 2018 outside of that there are very little knowledge or very little knowledge in the public of for how this mode would have played the goal was to make the format of the campaign and evolve it into a cooperative live service that linked back into multiplayer and its specialist creating a singular narrative universe that could also engage players who didn't usually play with the campaign whilst creating a unique 2v2 experience was the focus you could also play career by yourself and have ai fill in the gap your actions doing in the game would have genuine consequences with the mission having dynamic changes depending on which faction succeeds or fails in some cases, the next mission of the story would be completely different depending on who won or lost. That's really cool. And that's kind of like something that campaigns with Call of Duty don't necessarily do too often. Uh, like, for example, we haven't had a cooperative like a cooperative campaign in fucking ages, which they need to add. It's not that hard to add because you're a multi-billion dollar company and you've done it before with worse technology. Just fucking just do it. Just, just do it. I know there's more to it and you have to like pretty much designed the whole campaign around the possibility of playing co-op but like just please put it into consideration come on like please and there's ex an example um images that i can't look at uh but if you go to this reddit post yourself you can look at it uh, this is a long ass fucking thing oh my god long ass post actually no that's including the fucking comments okay anyways career takes place during 2070 in a post black ops 3 world a global pandemic alongside several climate disasters would heavily diminish the world's resources resulting in the year of chaos most of the world's resources and weaponry were created prior to the breakdown in technology with most of the new weaponry in black ops 4 being experimental prototypes created before the year of chaos it's worth noting noting that the the most of the launch maps weapons and specialist designs were created with this exact narrative in mind hence ruin having a tattoo that wasn't present in black ops 3 for example that makes a lot of sense because it definitely seemed like they it was just an older version of all the operators in black ops 3 so that does make a lot of sense it just i never knew that the year was 2070 so that's interesting so technically it would have been technically it would have been a sequel to black ops 3 although i don't know how good that would have been because black ops 3's campaign was god awful so i'm very curious on how that would have played out i really hope that like sometime in the future someone can get access to the build and be able to actually play it because i'm sure that build has to exist somewhere but we just don't have our hands on it from what i know so for the 2v2 aspect the war would take place between two playable factions the free people's army and the world's united nations 
uh, which is a central government body that acts as a collective system of defense. And the People's Army is like the military alliance in opposition to the World United Nations. Okay, so they're obviously head to head. One's a government, one's kind of like a rebellion, I guess. Players would pick their preferred faction and compete against the other side uh, by completing different objectives, creating that 2v2 setting. I really like that idea. It's very creative. And I feel like if they would have went through with that, that would have been a very unique experience, it's, except it's just with the Call of Duty fan base, it's a 50 50 because some people would fucking hate it because it's not a normal campaign and some people would absolutely love it because it's actually something new and innovative. Depending on your chosen faction, your gameplay experience will be completely different with the missions, gameplay, story and characters being from that perspective of whichever faction you aligned with. So I guess it would be like two different campaigns and I guess you could go in like a separate campaign and replay it on that other faction so you can see both. But like you'd meet different people, you'd be doing different things because obviously both organizations, like both factions fight for different things. So that makes a lot of sense. And that's really cool. In-game image of each faction. God, I'm going to have to go through and look at these all myself. If you're watching this video with me, or if you're watching this video along, just go through the post as I'm reading it um, and look at the images. It'll just be a lot easier for a viewer experience because I can't show it like I can read this stuff but I can't show this stuff uh with fear of myself being taken down actually the leaked campaign footage uh, from ages ago is actually on YouTube right now and hasn't been taken down I just don't want to take the risk of putting that on my channel but of course you can go and look at everything linked in the description so the mission design each mission was designed to be 15 to 20 minutes long with some of them including a timer there will be only around six story locations however each location will be two times bigger than campaign missions for Black Ops 3 with every career mission being a sector of a larger map and then, of course, there's examples for that. There's, like, examples for everything he's talking about. That's fucking crazy. So, for combat, as a standard for a campaign, you would have to AI to fight against, sometimes being from the other faction or third parties, depending on the mission. There would be parts where both sides could get into shootouts, PvP section of a mission, hindering the other faction's progress. If you were killed, you go into a down state uh, to be revived, and if you bled out, you would respawn at a base nearby to the action. So, that's kind of puts the whole down state uh kind of useless <laughs> several missions included vehicles such as the VTOL and ATV most of the vehicles within career would later be reused for blackout all players also had three selectable abilities on their d-pad all on cooldown similar to the cyber cores from black ops 3 okay that's interesting so you did have vehicles and everything I just I wonder how I mean obviously I haven't looked at the images yet but I really wonder how big of a scale this shit was and why like if they made all this progress and all this like set in stone ideas why did they cancel it i know they have their own reason and uh they said that it was like repetitive and everything but like just fix it you know now they were probably running out of time and i understand it's hard to develop a game so i'm not like flaming them for can like canceling this but i feel like it would have been really cool to see actually touch the light of day so there's an image of the cybernetic systems as well um there are also many side objectives alongside the main mission goal like calling in enemy reinforcements or creating false distress calls to lower away enemy npcs that's really cool to hinder the other faction's progress i love that idea companions each player could select a companion all of whom were multiplayer specialists these companions would be locked behind certain factions and would have their own special abilities in narrative arcs from a gameplay standpoint your companion would fight alongside you they could also be commanded by pressing down on the d-pad some missions even had a side objectives in areas that only certain companions could access that's also really cool it's really showing how like dynamic this fucking story was gonna be as the story continued you would build a relationship with your companion that changed dynamically depending on your faction's progress there are also plans for side missions that were focused on your individual companion that's just that's such a cool like side piece to this whole campaign idea i really like that progression similar to black ops 3's campaign you would earn xp by playing the campaign uh, and unlock new weapons abilities and equipment that's simple um you could also customize the gender and cosmetics of your player character and companion that's you could like does that mean you can do the gender of companion so i can make a ruin a female is that essentially what that's saying I don't know. Cutscenes. There are essentially no pre-rendered cutscenes in career, only in-game cinematics similar to zombies. Each major story beat within a mission would play a global cutscene from your faction's own perspective, depending on the outcome of certain objectives. Each mission would also end with a newsroom cinematic showing a news report of the previous mission, often being biased towards the faction who won. That's really cool. And the newsroom camera concept art. I really wish I could show this. And I'm gonna be mad if like other people make videos on this and actually show this stuff. Uh, I, I just I don't know if I can or not. And then there's a cinematic, which is the closest they have to a cutscene for this. Now, the missions. Below are four missions that were nearly completed and were within the last known build before the mode's eventual can cancellation. The images provided from late 2016 to very early 2017. Um, however, these missions would have been nearly 100% completed by the time career was scrapped. 
So you have aerosol convoy um, is one of the first missions in the story. Free People's Army was tasked with escorting a convoy. Okay, I already hate that. I hate escorting shit in missions. It's just so fucking repetitive, which, I mean, they did say the campaign was repetitive, but, you know. Um, then the other one, um, the other faction was tasked with destroying the convoy. Okay, so it's like that's still that 2v2 factor. You and your teammate have to escort it. The other people that you're playing with that were on the other faction would have to stop you. And that's where the PvP um, and PvE like aspect comes in. That's kind of cool. I just, I still love that 2v2 idea. That's so like innovative oh there's early gameplay oh my god i re hold on, i need to look at this i i can't show it but i'm gonna look at it i'll describe what i'm seeing okay so it's not like actual gameplay but like you like it's not like a video it's screenshots of actual gameplay where what seems to be a drone and you can definitely see the classic like it definitely definitely does look like it's being taken straight from black ops 3 but you can definitely see you have to destroy the different like cargo things it's like i think so the people that have to destroy it, which faction is that it was the world united nations yeah you're it's like their side they're controlling a drone and they have to you know do this stuff it does look exactly like black ops 3 though like I, I if you were to show me these these like screenshots um just randomly without any context i would assume these were like scrapped black ops 3 missions because that's exactly what it looks like it looks like black ops 3 on the xbox 360 not even gonna lie i guess what i'll just start doing is i'll start um just looking at the screenshots on another screen <laughs> um so data control regardless of the mission outcome the free people's army would become suspicious of the world united nations involvement in the black market convoy as a result they would head to zurich <laughs> switzerland uh to acquire critical data improving their theory um there's a loading screen that's a solid loading screen that looks practically finished that looks pretty nice Data control, your team must infiltrate the building and plant hacking device to download the data before the WN forces destroy the facility. Oh, okay, I like the Free People's Army logo. That looks really cool. And then that, um, in data control, the Free People's Army was tasked with infiltrating a data center and hacking into several terminals. Once the hacking devices were planted, the FPA needed to defend the terminals. Um, yada yada yada, hacking minigame. Okay, so it's just like Black Ops 3 when you like open up a tablet for like the HCXD. Um, it was kind of like that, but you had to press these certain buttons. It's like you're, it was a whole hacking minigame. That's pretty cool. Early mission screenshots from 2016, hence the outdated HUD and mission objectives. Okay, yeah. Literally just looks like BO3. Even the UI. No, the UI is... Wait, is this BO3? No, it's using... Yeah. So that's what they mean by outdated UI. It's using the UI from Black Ops 3. Like, you know, the bottom right HUD where it literally shows the CUDA as well. Um... This is really early development. My god, there is a lot of placeholders. Um, just a match. I'm going to show a screenshot of Black Ops 3 right now. At the bottom right, you know how you have your little specialist in the campaign and everything? I'll do one from the campaign. It looks pretty much exactly like that. It's the exact same thing. And that was like the placeholder. And then the little objective icons for like A, B, C for when you were doing the campaign of Black Ops 3, it looks the exact same as well. Um, that's why I was saying it looks just like BO3. So data escape. Um... If the FBA team acquired the data before the WN uh, team could place all dem demolition charges, then data control would have been next mission, yada, yada, yada. Um, loading screens for both factions. Okay, the WN and then the FPA. Okay, that's really cool. This is just so cool. Then snatch and grab. In contrast, if the WN succeeds and blows up the data center, the next mission after data control would be snatch and grab instead of data escape. Oh, so these are the different, like... Oh, I'm getting it now. These are the different possible next missions. Because like they were saying, depending on how a mission would go, the next mission could be completely different. So if data control went in one person's, like, like in favor of one person, it would be data escape. If it went in the others, then it would be snatch and grab. Okay. And there's also loading screens. Yeah, it, the loading screens look relatively the same for each. And then early storyboard. Um, yeah, these are very early placeholders. My God. It's so interesting seeing the early work on how, like... Activision and Infinity Ward and Treyarch and everything plan these these modes and everything and it's just it really put shows how much work gets put into this and th I think this is also making me realize how people like really talk shit about them making mistakes with the game and everything or like if a gun's way like if a gun's not balanced or if like something's not polished it's just like it's hard man it's really hard to do game dev is a very hard thing I've dabbled into it myself as a solo game dev and it is very difficult you guys got to give them some props for what they do <laughs> like um this video is going to get too long so i'm going to skip the narrative the side content skirmish um in skirmish the core gameplay elements um of the career mode are retained but there's no branching story i guess yeah this is just skirmish <laughs> i mean you just you you know go against each other i guess 
Um, custom game is there's a zombie cu zombies custom mutation. Oh, currently known as Zombies Custom Mutation in Black Ops 4, the entire system was repurposed from Career, a part of the skirmish mode, was the ability to tweak the core fundamental game settings to create your own campaign campaign experience, setting different modifiers and settings to change the experience. For example, you can enable 4v4 gameplay or disable some, if not all, abilities, spawn systems, health objectives, yada yada yada. Um, this was merely an extra mode for people who finished the main career story. However, there were plans to release the official Treyarch custom game modes with progression enabled throughout the season post-launch. And yet, DLC seasons. Additionally, there were plans for different seasons of career and story DLC post-launch. It was originally planned for the season's career to include three or so new missions, which would be the first time a mainline Call of Duty campaign received new story content after its launch. That would have been really cool. Earliest known internal post-launch roadmap. Oh, roadmap! Okay, so ZM intro, Titanic, Cinematic, and then a bunch of To Be Determined. Career DLC 1, Story 5, Career DLC 2, Career DLC 3, ZM DLC 1, which I guess is Zombies. I don't know. Uh, Morocco, Russia. Very cool. Nightmares. Oh my god, this fucking mode. In development name, Zombies Next. Career also had plans for Zombies content, which would have been a sequel to Black Ops, 2, Black Ops 3's Nightmares mode. The matches would have taken pl take place on the career maps and utilize classic Zombies AI uh, alongside special enemies such as Brutus and the Panzer Soldat. A fair amount of these concepts were moved to Black Ops Cold War's Outbreak. Nightmares Experience had two primary gameplay modes, one of them being similar to Grief, but on a larger scale with two teams attending to compete. Uh, complete the objectives as fast as possible, which I loved Grief from Black Ops 2. That was such a cool mode, and I wish they would bring that back. The other is a six-player survival experience. Very, very interesting. Um, your final thoughts. This is months of, of work, and everyone that worked on it is happy to get this out. Um, the final note, though, is the last known build of this game was in late 2017 for when Activision employees tried it out during holiday break. My sources plus I, or plus I have no leads, um... On finding any information or gameplay of it, unfortunately, if you do have info on it, it would be allowed to be appreciated if any information this gameplay would be released to the public. This is one of the largest pieces of scrapped content for our COD game, and will be phenomenal to see how this campaign looked like before the plug got pulled on it. Hope you all enjoyed reading it. I really enjoyed reading that. Thank you to this guy for putting together all this. This is so damn cool. I gotta go back and look at all of the images, because I don't know why I wasn't thinking of just looking at another monitor and describing it, because you can go to the, like, the page and look at it yourself. Um, along while I'm so you can actually see what I'm talking about, but that's so cool. It's just it's really really cool um, So I just wanted to go through and just talk about this I really wish that this would have been finished But I understand why they had to scrap it and this is just this is a lot more information like I did not realize until now how complete Black Ops 4's campaign was before they pulled the plug on it I thought there was barely any work done to it at all, but this is Really, really cool. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to be notified every time I upload another video like this one. All credit goes to this guy on Reddit. Uh, the link to the Reddit thread will be in the description below. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Have a good one.